Hey traders, thanks for checking out this video. My name is Travis from Master the Market. And in this one, we're going to be talking all about short selling. I'm going to break down exactly how short selling works. And I'll be giving you a short selling strategy that you can start implementing into your trading, even if you're brand new to trading and if you've never done any short selling before. So if you already know the basics and you know what short selling is, feel free to skip ahead to the strategy section of this video. I'll have some timestamps for that down below in the description. But for everyone else, let's start off with what is short selling. So short selling is going to be when a trader sells borrowed shares to buy back later at a lower price for a profit. Okay, so just like when you're doing a normal trade or investment, you still want to buy low and then sell those shares at a high price. The difference with short selling is that you're selling shares high first, and then later on, ideally, the price of the stock falls down and you're able to buy back those shares at a lower price for a profit. So to break this down step by step, let's first say that you want to short sell stock XYZ because you believe for whatever reason that the price is going to fall. So when you place that order to short sell the stock, automatically what that order is going to do is request to borrow those shares from your broker so that you're able to sell them without ever even owning them yourself. And this is going to really depend on the availability of those shares. If there's a ton of other people that are also trying to short sell that same stock, at the same time, you may not even be able to borrow those shares from your broker at all. However, if you do and you're able to locate those shares, your broker is going to loan them to you for a small borrow fee. Once you pay that borrow fee, you now have those shares that you're able to short sell right before you think the price of the stock is going to fall. Okay, so later on after you've placed that order to short sell, the next step is going to be to buy back those shares or in other words, cover your short position and once you do that, those shares are automatically going to be returned to your broker and you are either going to profit or lose the difference between where you bought and where you sold. So to help you visualize this process a little bit better, let's take a look at this diagram here that we see on the screen. And let's just assume that the red dot that we see here on the diagram is the price that we decide to short sell this stock. And don't worry, just in a few minutes, we're going to talk about the strategy behind when to short sell. Uh, but in this case, after we open this short position, uh, the price of the stock does fall down. We can see there is a strong move down afterwards, and we're able to buy back those shares at a lower price, again, profiting the difference between where we bought and where we sold. So this trade that we see right now here on the diagram is actually the exact same trade that we see here. As far as profitability goes, we're buying and selling at the same prices. The only difference is with short selling, again, we're just selling those shares first and then later on buying them back at a lower price. But the profit for both of these trades is the exact same. And just to reiterate, in the stock market, you always want to buy low and sell high. With short selling, you're simply selling high first and then later on buying low for a profit. Okay, now as far as the strategy goes, uh, just like there are plenty of different strategies with any other type of trading or investing, for example, when you're going long, you can buy the dip, you can buy the breakout, you can use different chart patterns and different candlestick formations. There's also a ton of different strategies for short selling. You can short sell a stock that's in a downtrend to kind of ride that downward momentum. You can short sell a stock into a clear level of resistance. But the one that I want to talk about here in this video is going to be to short sell into a stock's first lower high. And really what this strategy does is looks to take advantage of a stock changing from an uptrend into a downtrend. So if we take a look here at this diagram, uh, we can see that this is a stock that initially is starting off in an uptrend. So we get our first higher high on the chart here. Uh, we can see that this is the first high or the first peak in general before there is a small dip. And then this is going to be our first higher high because it is of course higher than the previous high. Then we get another higher high that forms. And then finally we get our first lower high, which is of course lower than the previous high. That first lower high is often a great sign that the stock is changing from an uptrend into a downtrend. And it can be a really great time to enter into a short position to take advantage of that bearish reversal. Now over the past week, we saw a really great example of this happen with the stock SONM. Uh, we're looking at the one minute chart here for SONM. And this actually happened to happen in pre-market, but this is something that happens time and time again all throughout the day with blue chip stocks and even with penny stocks. Uh, so what we see here is first, SONM is starting off in a very strong uptrend. 
we can see the first higher high. We get another higher high right here, another higher high, and then another. And then finally, we get our first lower high, which forms at about $4.40. So again, that first lower high that forms is really going to be a great opportunity to short sell. And as you can see in this example here, SONM sells off from about $4.40 at that first lower high point down to almost $2.20 just a few hours later. So that was almost a 50% sell off, which means a potential for a profit of almost 50% just from waiting for those higher highs to start turning into lower highs. And the other really great thing about this strategy is that every time you enter into it, there's going to be a very clear and defined level of risk. So if you think about it, if you're buying a stock at a level of support, the most common way that traders manage their risk with that type of trade is to cut losses if the stock starts to break down below that level of support. That same concept is going to apply to short selling as well. If you're short selling a stock into a level of resistance or below a level of resistance, because you would lose money as that stock goes higher when you are in a short position, you would want to cut losses if the stock started to break out above that level of resistance. So in this example here, if SONM happened to continue to trade higher and start breaking out above this previous high, at that point, there would be a good chance that overall, this stock was still in an uptrend, and we would probably not want to have a short position open in this stock. So you would want to cut losses on that trade and just wait for a better time to get into a short position. And that actually brings me to a really important topic with short selling. Um, obviously, managing risk and keeping your losses small is very important with any type of trading or investing. But a very common disclaimer with short selling is that in theory, it is a little bit riskier than other types of trading or investing. Because if you think about it, the worst case scenario when you buy a stock is that that stock goes to $0.00, and, zero cents and you lose 100% of your investment. However, with short selling, because you lose money as the stock goes up, and there's really no limit to how high that stock can go, there's theoretically no limit to how much you stand to lose when you have a short position open. Now, I will say that for the most part, your broker is not going to let you lose more than 100% of what you have invested into that short position. Um, so if you have a $5,000 short position open in a stock, once you get close to losing that entire $5,000, your broker is most likely going to call you and give you a margin call telling you to deposit more money into your account. And if you fail to do so, they'll simply exit you out of that short position for you. Um, but at the end of the day, that's not a guarantee. And you know there could be a big gap up that happens overnight or the stock could spike up so fast that there is no time for a margin call. Um, so it is important to understand the risks of short selling. And hopefully that kind of just emphasizes how important it is to use a level of risk and cut losses when the time comes to do so. Now, additionally, we of course already talked about how when you open a short position, you actually are borrowing those shares from your broker to sell them before you actually own them yourself. So I wanted to talk a little bit about different brokers for short selling. Uh, some of them are going to be better than others when it comes to locating shares to short. And then some of them are actually not going to offer short selling to their clients at all. So as far as brokers go that I recommend avoiding, um, in my experience, Robinhood, TD Ameritrade, and Fidelity are a few that are not going to be great options if you plan on doing some short selling. Robinhood actually does not allow traders to short sell at all currently. And brokers like TD Ameritrade and Fidelity, again, in my experience, they're just not great for borrowing those shares. And more often than not, if there's a stock that is spiking up that has a lot of attention on it, those are often the stocks that everyone is interested in short selling because after they have that big spike, they tend to crash back down and you can profit from that stock crashing back down. But I would say probably 90% of the time, TD Ameritrade and Fidelity and similar brokers tend to not be able to locate those shares in order for you to borrow them to short sell. Now on the other side of the spectrum, uh, brokers like Trade Zero, Interactive Brokers, and E-Trade all are known for being a little bit better options when it comes to short selling. They have a lot of different tools and features built into their platforms that kind of cater specifically to short sellers. And overall, they are known to be better options for borrowing shares to short. So you're going to have better chances of being able to short sell the stocks that you actually want to short sell. Okay, but anyway, with all of that being said, that's going to be a wrap for this video. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about short selling and enjoyed. 
If you did, please make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. And if you want to learn step by step more about day trading, swing trading, and even long term investing, I highly recommend you check out our programs at Master the Market, which are going to be linked down below in the description. But anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed and good luck with your trading.